In this video, we look at various validation techniques. Input validation means checking that data input by the user meets specific criteria or rules before being processed. We can see this quite commonly on online forms such as the one shown here. A number of boxes presented which the user has to fill out before they submit the form and a range of checks can be carried out. This is input validation. Let's look at the various types. First, we have a type check. Is the input of the correct data type? For example, are we expecting integers, reals or strings? Here we see where a type check could be performed on the age field. We ask the user to enter their age, they input it, and if the value is not dividable by itself with no remaining, then it can't be a whole number. This is a simple way of checking that an integer was entered. Next, we have what's known as the range check. So is the input entered within the correct range? For example, between one and 10 or between A and Z? Again, we could perform sensible input validation with a range check on the age field. We check the value entered, and if it's less than zero or greater than 100, we keep prompting them to enter the number again. Next, we have a presence check. So you'd use this on field that you consider mandatory. Has all the required data been entered? We should reject any blank inputs. So on this form, you can see that the name field and the code field both have little red asterisks next to them, indicating that these are mandatory fields. They're not optional. They can't be left blank. Again, we can simply include an if statement within a loop that says if the value entered into the name field is double quotes, double quotes. In other words, if it's empty, we tell the user you must enter your name to continue and we carry on repeating that loop until it isn't empty. Next, we have format checks. So this type of validation looks at the input and checks if the format of it is correct. For example, if it's a date field, do we want it going day followed by month followed by year or month followed by day followed by year? Do we want two digits in the year field or four? What about postcode or zip code? These all follow some strict formats. Now to understand the pseudocode for how this works, we need a better understanding of the various techniques used in string handling. And we'll look at that later in a video at the bottom of the screen there. We also have length checks. So does the input include the correct minimum or maximum or exact number of characters? For example, for a password or a car license plate or a national insurance number. So in our example here, we're expecting the user to type in a four letter code. We ask them to enter the code and then we check the length of the inputted variable to see if it's equal to four. And if it's not, we tell them they must supply a four letter code. And we keep asking them that in the repeat loop until eventually the length of the field they've entered is four characters. A slightly more advanced method of performing validation is check digits. This is a check digit in the last digit included in a code or some other form of identification number. And it's calculated from all the preceding digits in the code. They're commonly used with barcodes, ISBN numbers on books, and vehicle identification numbers. We won't go into check digits in detail here, as we have a completely separate video on it, which we've listed at the bottom of the screen. That's everything you need to know about validation. Pause the video and take some notes.